All right, hello everybody. It's one two three Stealth Bomber here, bringing you another tutorial on the Assault Squad editor. And today, as you can see, we're gonna be doing beach assaults. Um, right now, I'm just showing you a preview of what it looks like in its final form. Um, so, guys, right before I actually start showing you how to do it, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the request week thing. Before, when I was supposed to do the request, I did not. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't post another video right after my auto man and cannons. I'm sorry about that because my fraps kind of acted up and um, I don't know. I had to reinstall and all that stuff and I had a bunch of problems. So again, I'm sorry for that. For the people who are still waiting for requests, don't worry. I'm going to extend the request week a little bit longer so I can get those other requests in. Because, you know, I feel bad for you guys. So, you know, you guys have been waiting long enough. Um, I don't blame you. So, okay. Um... So obviously, uh, beach assaults, eh, they're not, they're okay. They're um, kind of hard to make. There's a lot of stuff involved just to make one LCVP work. But really cool in the end if it does get to work. Now obviously, I'm not going to make a bunch of them. Not make an epic scale, but I'm just going to do one for example. Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do a little bit differently is I'm going to have it so there's going to be, um, everything's already built and everything's set up. But now I'm going to explain it in detail why it's all there. Because if I do it from start, like from scratch, all the way from the start to the end, then when I recorded it, it took about 45 minutes. And I didn't want a 45 minute video. This, um, when I already set everything up, now I just explain it to you guys. Um, it makes it a lot shorter. And it made it about 32 minutes, which is a still a long video. But at least, you know, it didn't go to an overextend amount of time. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, as I, um, as you guys see on my screen right now, is the LCVP is on land. And when you uh, go through your options and all that stuff, when you're looking for the LCVP, obviously what you want to first do is place it on land. You don't want to place it in the water because if you do, trying to get the guys inside is almost physically impossible. Uh, it's really hard. It's a pain in the butt, you know, sometimes. So I suggest putting it on land. It looks a little weird at first, but don't worry. It's not going to be there permanently. Um, this way it makes the infantry walk nice and easily inside. It works a lot easier. Okay, so, um, we're going to be, I'm going to eject those soldiers that are in the holding bay, uh, just to show you that they need tags and the LCVP itself also need tags. Now the driver and the two gunners do not need tags. Okay, so I'll go more into that detail in a minute. Okay, um, so, um, yeah, so, um, first thing we're going to do is um yeah i don't know so yeah all right so here so the first thing we're gonna do is i'm gonna eject the soldiers i'm gonna I switch the f to one mode and i'm gonna eject them again i already um i already did this all full but i'm just gonna show you it really quickly when you place the soldiers do not put them in the lcvp right away what you want to do is select them and give them a tag all you need to do is give them one tag all right that's it simple enough okay and then after you give them that one tag, then you can put them inside the LCVP. Now, obviously, I'm not, I didn't fill it up all the way. An extra few guys can, you know, fill up the rest of the cargo bay. But, I mean, it's good enough just for the sake of the video. Okay, so now we're going to give the uh, LCVP also tags. You need to give it two tags. One you name up, obviously, and then the other one will be a hidden tag. And the hidden tag is obviously so it's hidden from view unless if it's called upon. Okay, so now what you're going to do is once everything's set up, you're going to place it in the water. All right. Uh, now, really quickly, right before we go anywhere else, you're going to go uh, select the LCVP and you're going to go to the properties on the right. And where it says constrain, you're going to change that from ground to water. Because if it was on ground, the LCVP, it would glitch and it wouldn't move. Make sure that's very important because then it would be on the ground level, not it would be on the water level, not the ground level. Because that's two, two completely different things, just so you know. Okay, so when you're all set with that, um, we're gonna continue. You know, we're gonna proceed to making our waypoints. Okay, so all you need to do is just make one set of waypoints, one for the LCVP and one for the infantry. I'll show you in a moment. Simple enough. You, I mean, what you see on screen is pretty straightforward. You gotta make one that starts off in the ocean and have the LCVP come close enough to the shore to eject the passengers. Now. And then have another set of waypoints to go back out to sea. 
Now for the infant, now for the LCV pay, you want it's a little crucial on where you place the away point for this because if you place it too close to the shore, the LCVP will go through the ground and you know kind of get a little glitched and won't move, um, and it makes it a little ridiculous looking. Won't look re um, realistic if you're doing a good like campaign mission and you want to make it about the same distance as I have it right now. But again, it also differentiates depending on how, uh, how deep the water is. Since it's a single player mission, they don't make the water deep at all. So um, you kind of make it about like right there. And then if I placed it out too far, then the guys would be, um, they jump out into the water and they would be swimming there. So you don't want that. You want to make it so it's just perfect enough so when the, op the door opens, they run right out onto the shore. Now, and then the rest, now so after that, the rest of the waypoints are going to be going back out to sea. Now, why do I have it in a V-shape and like two other ways? Um, it uh, that just I made something up. It doesn't not it does not matter. You can make it so there's one waypoint, extra waypoint where the thing follows, or you can have multiple, like I have it here. Does not matter. I just made it into a V-shape. I don't know why, but again, it does not matter. Now, these waypoints right here are for the infantry. Um, now this waypoint I selected. I'll talk more more about why that's crucial right there, because as you can see, the cone is red, so it has to command as you can see. But um, we'll talk more about that later. Um, now, the setup for the waypoints does not really matter. Again, I just made it so the you know the infantry go in random directions. Now, for your you know when you're making one, you can have it going in a hundred directions, or you can have it one going one direction. Again, does not need to be like it doesn't matter on the way you set it up. All right. Okay, so when you're done with your waypoints, when you're all satisfied with the waypoint, head over to zones. We're going to need two zones in order to complete this uh, this process. And the first zone I'm going to talk about is the delete zone. I call it the delete zone. Uh, you can make it a circle or poly, but I made it a poly in my case because I can make it large in size. Now, this delete zone, I'm going to talk more in detail about later, but this is so when the, um, the LCVP reaches this zone, it will get deleted. And that's why I called it the delete zone. Um, so once it reaches those waypoints, it just doesn't stay there, obviously. Now, obviously, you want to adjust it. So when, I, when you switch back to F1 mode, it looks like the LCVP actually left the battle itself. Um, you want to put it past the fog, see? So how like right there, if you put it like beyond it, like, you know, like past it, then it wouldn't look realistic. And the LCVP just like disappears out of nowhere. You want to make it so it's a little bit past it. After it passes the fog, then delete it. Okay. And then your second, um, your second zone is going to be an infantry zone. This is going to be, again, I'm going to go in more to detail about what this one is. But this one, uh, I would suggest putting a circle so can you, since you can make it a little bit smaller. And this zone is going to be changing the characteristics of the emitting infantry from the LCVP. Um, again, I'll go more into detail about this later in the video. Uh, now, where you want to place it, um, you could place it on top of that waypoint of the LCVP where it emits it, or just put it a little bit beyond like the way I have it right now. Um, but don't make it too big and don't make it you know too far away. Like about right there is good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to triggers. Now, we need three triggers in total. Okay, so now if you remember from my other video, how I had um, in the auto manning cannings, how I had like one simple trigger, but it was so complicated because of all like the advancements and all that other stuff. It was just a pain. But this one's not as bad. This one's actually very straightforward. Um, so the first trigger we're going to work on is making it so the LCVP moves constantly and all that stuff like it spawns endlessly and all that stuff so the first one you're going to go to the condition and look for entities when you do that you're going to go to the selector and go to the tag and give the tag the lcvp tag and then where it says count in value i would suggest maybe a less than or equal to um about one in my case because um if you do greater than then that means if you put like say value of one or zero or something like that, then it'll constantly keep spawning, no matter how uh, no matter how many. Every after like the delay of say like sixty seconds, it will constantly keep spawning, no matter what. The less than specifies how many can be on the battlefield at once, which is a lot better. So one 
or less can only be on the battlefield at a time before spawning another one. Okay, so makes sense. Um, so yeah, like again, but you uh, you don't have to follow the less than or equal to. Obviously, the, if you're making a um, a mission, you can make it greater than or equal to. But again, experiment with this stuff because I mean, the way I'm setting it up is an example and. Um, like the simplest form and the easiest form. Obviously, you can go crazy with this stuff and, you know, with the counts and values and all that other stuff. But this is the most simplest way to set up a beach assault. Okay, so when you're done with your condition of entities, you're going to go over to commands. And your first command will be actor to waypoint. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the selector and expand it and go to where it says tag and give the tag of the LCVP. You're going to hit OK after that. Um, the waypoint will be the waypoint the LCVP starts at. In my case, it'll be zero because um, it starts out off in the ocean. I don't want it to start at the beach already, so obviously we need to start it off in the ocean. And clone, you want to check this off because then that means the LCVP will spawn endlessly and continuously. And approach, will I put teleport and rotate, and it just means te it teleports it to... Um, the waypoint zero and it rotates it to the right direction it needs to go in simple enough um you hit okay our next command after that will be an actor state all right um just give me a sec okay um so our next command like i said will be after actor the waypoint will be actor state okay so you're going to go to first what you're going to do is go to selector and expand it and go to the tag. And then give it the tag of the LCVP again. Um, now the control um, will be AI. The fire mode will be return. The move mode will be hold. The weapon prepare on AI move will be enable. And the speed will be normal. Now these are optional obviously. You can you know, change those if you need to. But why do I put it on return and hold and all that stuff? Well reason why I put, say, the move mode on hold is because sometimes the LCVP, um, the way it's made in the game, it likes to go randomly. If you put it on free, even if it's supposed to find, you know, follows, you know, a certain waypoint, it will move freely that it's not even supposed to follow. Keeping it on hold will also, will automatically always make it follow the same waypoint. Uh, the, always make it follow and never, you know, go off course. Weapon prepare, don't really have to worry about that. That only really applies to infantry, but that's just saying it'll get the guns ready automatically for firing. And then AI move, you want to keep that on enable. Yeah, enable. Um, and then the speed. The uh, the LCVP itself doesn't go really fast. Normal and fast, you don't see much of a difference. So in my case, I'm just going to put normal. And then the fire mode, like I said, the return, uh, when um, you could keep that on an open, but in my case, if the enemy fires, then the LCVP will fire back. Okay, so when you're all set, you're going to hit OK. Your next command is going to be a delay command. Now, the delay command, very simply, it just means how long will it take for the LCVP to spawn. Okay, so in my case, I put 60 seconds, so that means... 60 seconds will go by in order for another LCVP to spawn. Now remember that entity condition of the count and value have to be true in order for um, another one to spawn. Okay, so you might want to adjust the delays depending on the way you set up your mission. Okay, and then finally you have your command, which will be, our last command will be a trigger. And what you have to do is just go to the name, expand it, and give it the name that you named the trigger. Which, will, in my case, I named it LCVP. And you'll notice this is actually the same setup from my Endless Battles tutorial from many months ago. Um, it's the exact same setup. So, very straightforward. Okay, so our next um, trigger will be the Delete Trigger. This is going to apply on how to get rid of the LCVP. Okay, so obviously you don't see any conditions, so you don't need any conditions. But you'll see two, condi uh, two commands, so you need... Two commands and the two commands are delete and trigger so <clears throat> so the delete trigger um we're gonna select that in a second okay so the delete trigger all you have to do really simply is you're gonna go to selector expand that and you're gonna give it the tag of delete but wait a minute 
We didn't give any tags named delete. Well, this is where you got to make one up. You got to actually type it in yourself. So this one, remember this tag that you may make up. In my case, I would just put delete so it's nice and easy to remember. Del or delete or whatever. Because um, it's in the same category as delete. Now, why? I'll explain more why we need that. Because that comes later in the video. But for zone, all you have to do is just select the, uh, the delete zone that we made earlier in the video. Uh, so yeah, that one's actually the like an actual one we made. But for the tag, make up something that you'll remember. So in my case, it'll be delete or del. But again, really quickly, the zone will be the zone, um, that big zone in the back of the map that gets rid of it. So pretty much... Um, because later in the vid, what we what we do is we add an entity state so it adds the tag of um, to the LCVP. So what it means is now it has the same tag as um, this delete command. So now it knows the the unit it needs to delete. So then, since it reached the zone, it will eventually delete itself. Okay, simple enough. I mean, it's a little confusing, but you'll know what I mean when I get to it further on. And then for the last one, you just need to add in a trigger and again give it the same name. Okay, so um, now our next trigger uh, we're going to do is for the infantry characteristics. Now, if you remember for that uh, small zone I, I talked about earlier, that infantry zone I made earlier, now this one comes into play. So the first one we need is a condition. You're going to go to the units and expand that, and you're going to give the tag of the infantry. Now, make sure it's the infantry, not the LCVP. This, this whole trigger right here is going to apply to the infantry only. Okay, so you're going to hit OK after that. And then where you, where it says near to, expand it. Go to where it says zone. And give it that small zone that we made. So that infantry zone. Okay. Uh, and then what it's really saying is uh, the infantry, once the infantry reach that zone, then the command will activate, which is the actor state that we'll be adding in later in a minute. Okay, so this condition has to be true in order for this command to even occur. Okay, and the command happens to be an active state. So obviously, you do um, go to selector and you open it and give it the tag of the infantry. Um, you go to control, put it on AI, fire mode hold, move mode hold, and weapon prepare on and AI move disable and speed fast. Now, why would I do that? Kind of like I did for the LCVP. Well, reason why I did this is because sometimes when the enemy like when uh, guys from the lcvp notice the enemy or the enemy notices them they will kind of like go into prone or whatever and they'll just be standing there you know like they do aimlessly sometimes they just do that and then they don't follow the waypoint so what we're doing is we're making it so they so they can't fire at the enemy and they won't move anywhere else but to the next waypoint Okay, so that's what it really means. So we're making it so they have to run to the beach in order to, they have to follow that next waypoint in order to proceed. Um, so yeah, so just make sure it's um, the infantry drop and, you know, the infantry uh, tag in the zone, the infantry zone that we made and as well as an actor state. Okay. All right, so we're almost, we're kind of like halfway done a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to head over back to waypoints. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, but don't worry. this It's not as hard as you think it is. Um, so the first thing what we're going to do is you're going to select the waypoint the LCVP um, will emit the troops from. So in my case, it'll be waypoint 2. So this waypoint right here on the screen. This is the, we're going to be selecting this waypoint. And as you see, as I selected it, there's a bunch of commands at the bottom right. Um, so this is, it looks like a lot, but it's, they're pretty straightforward. You'll, you'll know how easy it actually is when we start explaining them. Okay. So when you right click and hit add, you're going to first find waypoint. Um, so our first command will be waypoint. And then what you're going to do is when you're on waypoint, it says who, when you're where, yeah, where it says who you're going to check that off to where it says actor. Okay. So that means it's just one single actor that we're talking about here. Now the action It'll automatically start off on start. Now, what you're going to do, because it'll be like that, when you switch it, we want to switch it to suspend. And you'll notice it just, you know, goes all away. Now, what this is saying is it'll suspend the LCVP's movement. Okay, so it will not move anymore. 
Um, and this is the start of the beach invasion, how it actually works. We want the LCVP to stop moving so it can emit the guys. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it will not, when it, so the suspend movement, it will only go from zero to two, but it will not continue to the other waypoints back all the way out sea. Okay, so our next command will be after that will be the entity state. Now, the entity state, remember how I was talking to you about that made-up tag that you were making? Well, this is where you're going to need it. So, this is where, when it reaches this spot, uh, this waypoint, it's going to add the tag of the one that you're going to make up. So, again, you're going to have to type in the same tag. Uh, the selector, you do not need to touch because the selector is already done for you. Where it says, it's like parentheses, like W, or no, I'm sorry, brackets W. That means just waypoint, okay? It automatically, that's already there for you. Um, tag add, however, you need to type in that same tag that we were talking about earlier. So in my case, it was Dell because now it's going to add the delete tag. And remember, from that delete command that we made earlier, it now specifies that, oh, that LCVP has the delete tag. So now I'm going to delete it because it has that tag, plus it's in the delete zone. So now, and then it deletes itself, Okay. Um, so now that's why we need that delete command. All right. Cause, um, from if, cause remember we didn't make up the delete tag yet, because if we put in the delete tag on uh, the LCVP already, then it would have deleted it and it would have never spawned. So that's why we need to add a tag, not just give it right away. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the waypoints and our next one, our next command will be effect. Now, just before I go anywhere else. This has to be in order. The way I'm setting this up has to be in the order it needs to be. Because if you put it in another order or anything like that, this will not work. Yes, it, this when it comes to the actual like opening of the doors and all other stuff, it has to be very specific. So our next command, like I said, is an effect. Now this one, uh, the effect is open. What does that mean? It just simply opens up the door um, of the LCVP. But um, the selector, again, you don't need to touch. But the effect, you do. Um, just type in simply open. Now, a lot of people think, a lot of people misunderstand that. People think, oh, I have to type in animation because it's kind of like an animation how it opens up the door. But no, animations are strictly for infantry only. It does not affect tanks, aircraft, um, ships, and all other stuff. When you want other stuff to be affected, it's actually the effect property or the effect command. Okay, so obviously, you type in open. All right. Um, so after that, we're gonna go to after the, after that command, you're gonna do emit. Okay. So uh, if you remember from my emit and wait command video, this is the same thing. Again, do not touch the selector. You don't need to. Uh, however, the waypoint and the crew, we're gonna need to touch. Um, the waypoint will be the waypoints that the infantry need to follow. Okay. Um, so the yeah. So. The waypoint will be the inventory, inventory's waypoint that they need to follow. Because obviously 2 and 5 are not connected. But however, once the inventory are, um, are emitted, they need somewhere to go. So this waypoint will tell them to follow that waypoint. We'll tell them to follow this. And then obviously since 5 is now connected to other ones, it will follow those two. Um, and then crew. All you have to do for crew is you're just going to have to expand it. And just give it the tag of the infantry. Alright. So uh, that's all you have to do. The mode and count you don't need to touch. Okay. So you can hit OK after that. Okay. And then what you're going to do after that. <clears throat> is we're going to go to a delay. Uh, the delay, I'll explain what the delay actually does a little bit more later. But I would say for this delay, you would probably add um, maybe about 5 to 10 seconds. Okay. So make sure the delay, just so you know, the delay is the next command after the emit command. All right. Um, about 5 to 10 seconds. And I'll explain what this does in a second. Okay. Uh, your next command will be in effect yet again. And instead, well, instead of open, it will be closed. It's the opposite of open, which is closed. 
And uh, all you have to do where it says effect, just type in close. Uh, the selector, again, you don't need to touch this. All right. So really quickly, I want to explain to you what the difference between, you know, what's like the overview of what's going to happen. Okay. So the waypoint, what that's going to do is it's going to suspend the movement. So it stops the LZVP. It's going to give it the tag, the delete tag. Then it's going to um, open up the doors. Then emit the soldiers from the LCVP. And then about six seconds after that, it'll close the doors. Okay, so now you see how that works. I mean, it's all broken down to the basic premises of what an action does. Um, so yeah, we have two others that we need to still do. We need another delay and another waypoint. All right. Um, Okay, so after your effect of close, add another command of delay. Um, I suggest you put for this delay about 0 0.1 seconds to about 1 to maybe 2 seconds. You don't want to keep it long for this because this is, again, I'll explain what this one's going to be. Because um, after it closes the door, um, then it's going to resume its movement. So the last command we need is another waypoint. Uh, you're going to go to where it says who. Select actor. Go to action. And instead of uh, suspend, it's the opposite of that, which is resume. Um, and then the direction, you can either keep it default or forward. Um, don't put backward because that means it'll literally back up all the way to the last waypoint in the back. Uh, so I'd suggest maybe default or forward. But uh, in my case, I'm going to put forward because it'll actually do a U-turn to go to the next waypoint. And now that's a forward motion. All right. Um, now resuming means now it actually resumes its movement. So pretty much what it's all saying is uh, it suspends the movement, gives it the tag, opens up the door, emits the soldiers, uh, waits a little bit, closes the door, waits a little bit more, and then resumes the movement onto the rest of the waypoints. And then obviously um, once it reaches the delete zones, uh, it gets deleted after that. And then it happens all over again when it spawns another one. Alright. Um, so yeah, that's really about it. I mean, this was actually... This uh, this part is probably the hardest out of all of them. And a whole this this whole entire, like, section. So, it's, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It's It's like literally a breakdown of every single action it's going to do. I mean, it just seems like a lot. But it's really not. Now, just make sure, guys, like I said before, make sure this is all in order. If it's not in order, this will not work. Um, yeah, so make sure you have everything correctly set up. Go back, maybe if you need to, or rewind it. Something like that. So you make sure you have everything correctly set up. Um, one thing, like, misdone will not work at all. Okay? And then our, we got to do our final thing. we got to give an actor state to the infantry once they reach the waypoint on land. Now why? Well, if you remember from before, when we gave the infantry, when they got to that zone, we made it so we restrict their movement and their fire and all that other stuff. Now, we're adding another um, state so the, it pretty much does the opposite. It makes it so they can move free. It makes it so they can fire, you know, you know, on open fire and all that stuff and then move at decent speed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I mean, so yeah, I mean, you gotta, so we're pretty much just doing the opposite. So, um, you don't, honestly, this ha doesn't have to be done. Like I said, you don't have to do this, um, but it's recommended that you do. Yeah, so that's really about it. All right, so, I mean, just make sure that you, uh, we just do the opposite of, uh, when you, since you hold position and a lot of other stuff, it's not gonna change unless if you, um, add another actor state and redo it again, okay? So, now we, uh, press start and we're gonna test it. Okay, so the Americans already, I have Americans on, uh, land already under fire by Japanese, um, machine guns and infantry. Okay? Uh, we have a, um, now I pressed F3 mode to show you that one, it will stop at that waypoint and the guys will come out. The door opens and there the guys are running out now. And an artillery just hit the LCVP. Okay, so as you noticed, it closed the door, but you're wondering why is it not moving? Well, 
That's because um, the artillery just kind of messed it up right there. It wasn't supposed to happen. Um, actually, that artillery explosion should have killed it. I don't know why it didn't, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to end this and redo it because the artillery just messed up the whole entire thing. So, I'm going to redo this. And get, I'm going to first, I'm going to end it and I'm going to get rid of the artillery. Because, um, yeah, that, that could happen again if I hit start again. So, I'm just going to completely get rid of that and just... Um, retry it now i'm gonna speed it up a little bit uh so you know because it does take some time to get here yeah it is very slow <laughs> all right now i'm gonna slow back down okay so here they go their the door opened and then now they're rushing out and they're yeah see now you could see um and see now it closes the door and it continues and see how it went into like a u-shape pattern it went in a complete like like U-shaped way, and then it continued on to the like the waypoint all the way back out over there. Now you'll notice that those last two guys in the LCVP they jumped out the sides. Now why? Well, that's just the way the LCVP was designed when uh, the creators, you know, developers made this game. So that's actually not my fault. It's actually not the way I positioned it. It's um, it's just because uh, the way they made the LCVP. Um, so yeah, no matter what, even if you put it like on land or whatever, it'll like the rest of the guys will get out normally and run out, but the last two guys will always jump out from the sides, which I don't know why. But as you noticed from a little bit earlier, the um, in the back the LCPP got deleted, and then about like a like a few seconds later, a new one appeared. So yeah, that's really about it. It'll keep doing this endlessly until um, you know objective completes or whatever, until you stop it or whatever. Whatever. So, uh, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, liked it, and favored it. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please uh, put down a comment down below or on my channel. Uh, this is a little confusing, so you might have to rewind this. But this is really cool when it gets to work out, you know, fine, obviously, because you see it in the video. So, guys, I um, hope you guys will uh, enjoy this, like I said. And uh, I'll be posting another re request video soon, which will be about capturing flags. So... Guys, I will see you guys next time.